G'day! In today's video, I'm doing a motherboard swap from a very damaged Nokia that I suspect has other issues going on with it to a new Nokia 2.3. So I'm going to be doing a motherboard transplant in this particular phone. So to begin with, make sure it's powered off or dead flat like this one in this instance. From here, we're going to have to take the SIM tray out. And we have a SIM card and an SD card. And with that removed, we should be able to take the back trim off. So the, so the fake metal look, that's actually plastic, and should come off relatively easily. Especially with the aid of a pry tool. There's no power button on the back, so once you get to a certain amount of it, you should be able to get some nails in there and take it off like so. Next up from here, we need to take the screws out of the back here. So all Phillips heads, all fairly standard, nothing too special. So the reason why this is getting a transplant rather than just simply a new screen is the unknown condition of the charger port, the battery, and the overall condition of it wasn't looking too good. I find once you get phones down to a certain age, or a certain age of the phone, certain amount of them being sold, there may not be the mass variety of parts available for that particular model of phone. So for example, the Nokia 2.3 here, if you require a screen and a few other different components, you'd be struggling to buy them individually. But you may be able to buy a good old stock, a second hand phone. So that's where this one's really come into just buying that, that spare parts phone. One that's kept in good condition that will do what we need it to do. Looking at here, I don't believe this should be looking as damaged as it should, this particular shield. You can see all the different bends to it, as opposed to this one over here. I'll disconnect the battery, disconnect the display, disconnect the charge port. From there, I'm not actually seeing any other screws holding it in. I will also disconnect the antenna over here, like so. And then with that removed, I'll go by here, and that's extremely easy to lift out. This side here doesn't look to be damaged, so hopefully we're all right. But from here, we've got the board that we require. We can see yeah, various stickers, various writing, but I don't think I'll really need much more from this. So right now, I'm gonna put this aside, put this aside, give the bench a quick wipe, and then we'll get into the new one and do exactly the same. Out with the old, in with the new. So from here, we're doing exactly the same again. Taking out the SIM tray. Prying off the back will be a tad more challenging on this one, as this one hasn't been run over by a car or whatever's happened to the other one. And we'll require a different pry tool on this one. So we've got a metal pry tool here. Hopefully, I can get into it. There we go. So once it's started off, I can switch back to the plastic one. Just keep going. And I should be able to pull that back from here. And we're in. I did have my heat pad turned to 75 degrees Celsius as I thought there may be a bit more adhesive in involved, but as we found, there's really none there. So you don't require any heat pads to be able to do this transplant. I find this is mostly also for data recovery with older phones that parts aren't available for and people requiring information or data off there. Typically from there, what I would recommend is just purchasing a whole nother phone and transplanting the body as it's happening in this particular video here. There we go. So this one does have an overall simplistic design to it as opposed to some other models of phones, similar to what I would probably see in an Oppo or a Xiaomi phone. Um, Samsung's usually are a bit more complicated. A few more screws under here. So for example, in a Samsung, if we took this off, I would expect to find more screws under here. Around this particular one, we do not see any other screws. It's all being held down by that plastic shield. 
which from a repair standpoint does make the job quicker and more straightforward as you don't have any hidden screws as you're working on it. And as I mentioned about the shield on the back of the old one, we can see this one is noticeably dinted, that one is not. So that may or may not make any difference to the phone, but we'll find out shortly. So I'll put the new board aside, as that's no longer required. Put the old board in here, and connect up the video cable, which should just simply evolve, involve lining it up over the top of it and give it a little wiggle, and we should be able to push down like that. So I'm holding it over the top, I can feel it's kind of gripping, I can wiggle it slightly, and then I push down. And that goes and clicks it into position. The antenna cable itself is a little bit more challenging, as if you do mash it in the wrong spot, you do potentially damage the connection, as it is rather delicate. So I've got that sitting on top. I use a little bit of pressure on top. That's clicked into position. The way that I can tell that it's attached is if I push it to the left and the right, it should just pivot. It shouldn't just fall off or anything like that. And lastly, connecting up the battery, the same as these three. Line it up over the top, push down, and it should make a noticeable snap. And from there, put the back shield back on. It should click into position like so, and put those screws back on. Also because the back cover itself doesn't involve any, any fingerprint scanners or any other buttons on the back of the phone. There's no flex cable coming out and going to it. So that means that disassembling it and reassembling this is pretty straightforward. So if you're new to working on phones, this would be a good basic one to get an idea on how they, the basic concept of how they go together, how the cables connect, as it is rather straightforward. As you can see here, everything's nearly connected. Go. One more screw. Granted, I did put the warranty screw in the different position, but they are all of the same length, so it doesn't really matter at all. These screws are from the other phone. I put the back on. We'll change the back. As you can see, we're much nicer over here. Put that on. Push. Push. go, SIM tray installed. So this one does have an option of being a SIM tray for another model or a multi-SIM version of this one, dual SIM. Line it up, push it in, click. I might actually swap that over. That does have some wear marks on it as opposed to this one, which is looking a bit better. And hopefully from here we can see the Nokia display. Push, hold, vibrate, wear on. So from here, we're all good. That is one transplanted Nokia 2.3. Hope this helps, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.